work as assistant professor uh, in CIED. So I think this much more and uh, more than enough for my introduction. So today we are uh, having this session on uh, uh, integration of ICT in teaching, learning, and assessment. That's what is the session is about. I'll also be uh, discussing a little on the open educational resources, so on the licenses part as well. So we'll start the session. I'll share my presentation. Uh, is my presentation visible? Hello, can you confirm? Yes, ma'am. It's, it's visible, ma'am. Right. So we are going to discuss about the ICT in teaching, learning, assessment, uh, certain points like we will be talking about few points like what is technology, uh, what is ICT and why technology and how to integrate with a few aspects on it. Okay. And uh, in this, like uh, uh, what actually I just wanted to close it saying that we all have to have a common understanding of what is technology. Otherwise, what will happen is like we all be in a different understanding where we'll not be able to uh, go in a uh, same thought process. So all of us have to have a common understanding. What does ICT refer to? So ICT means it is creating, storing, retrieving, manipulating, sending and receiving digital information. So this is what is the meaning of it. So we need to understand what does ICT here means. For example, I'm right now using a presentation for our session. So can I claim that I'm using ICT? Similarly, I may use this kind of a presentation in my normal classroom where I'm presenting and I'm talking. So can I claim there also using ICT? So we need to question ourselves whether I have done this or not. So when we think about this presentation, I have created a presentation. I have stored that presentation. You can see it's created on 21 January, 2022. Okay, so this is created and stored. So whenever I need this presentation to be used, I am retrieving it and I'm then manipulating it because earlier the content was little different. I need to update my presentation when I take the session for the next group. So I'm making corrections in it. I'm adding content to it. I'm deleting content from it. So that is what I'm doing manipulation. All this are being done in the digital inform because the content is available as in the digital form. And now if you see when I'm using it in this classroom, I am sending it to you. You are all able to see my presentation from wherever you are. So I am sending it and you are also receiving it as a digital information. There is no change in the format, right? So if you see here, right now I have used this. To use this, I have used a software called Prezi. I'm using a device, a desktop device. For you to receive it, you may use a desktop or a mobile device. We also need internet connection to get connected. Also, we are using Zoom to be connected. So here, what does ICT means? It is a combination of Zoom software, Resi software, internet connection, and the physical device which we have. All this together can only call as ICT. It's not only one. So sometimes ICT is a combination rather than a single Entity. So this is minimum thing we need to understand about what is ICT before we go forward. Why do we need really ICT? Technology can really help us in visualization of the content. How visualization of the content? I think you have already done the subject specific uh, sessions. So for example, let me take one example as FEC. Okay. It helps you to visualize. Like I'll take one example from Max also. So all the children would have learned in their school that some of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So here, if you see, I, a child may see with their own eyes in the board when they are teaching, saying that a teacher is drawing a triangle like this, marking the angle, and trying to measure the angle writing this, a teacher, a child is able to see that this is true for this one triangle, right? But can a child visualize whether it is true for all triangles? Can a child visualize this as a generalization? 
it's very difficult to visualize for all triangles it is true so we need a tool to show them to at least come to a conclusion it's an all triangle so here you can see you can keep on moving the triangle and say i'm changing the triangle how much ever i change the triangles i have just taken all these angles like 180 degree i have taken this triangle this vertex so i'm taking this also in all the directions okay so if you see how much ever i change angles changes but some then change so when you child is able to do this the child is able to support the visualization yes i have tried for multiple triangles so this is a generalization it is true for all triangles so that is how a child will be able to visualize similarly an example let me take it in uh, science uh, many times when we ask teachers of uh, science like what is the ph value of blood people usually correctly say that it is uh, around 7.57 kind of answers come from the teachers it's not only science teachers but to anybody some of them other than science even most of the science teachers were not able to tell what is the ph value of human blood so why because they have never tested it in the classroom they have not done it as an experience but it is also not very much insisted anywhere to do for experiment so they have not learned it so for example i'm taking here blood sorry right now it's what uh, water so i'll just change it i'm just taking trying to take blood in the there is some problem let's first take a chicken soup and then we will try out with other items so i have just taken a chicken soup i wanted to see that what happens like what is the uh, ph value of uh, chicken soup it is 5.8 so now the question is what will happen if i add water to it can you give your answers in the chat box what will happen to the ph value when i add water to it can you write your answers in the chat box it will become neutral okay others it will decrease it will increase okay so we have got all the three answers some of them are saying it will become neutral some of them are saying it will become decrease some will be telling some are telling that it will increase let us watch what will happen so i am trying to add water what's happening is it decreasing or increasing it is right now increasing okay so why it is increasing somebody should check that answer also let us same thing check with so many times when we put like this now people tell that that's why we first take the blood and then show the uh, thing so when i take blood here <clears throat> you can see the ph value is 7.4 what will happen if i add water to blood now last time when we took chicken soup it was increasing so what will happen now to the blood's ph value when it we add water somebody again says decreases somebody says increases somebody says it increases and decreases but we need to check it out what it happens so let's try to pour water you can see now it's decreasing so earlier it was increasing now it's decreasing so many times when we show that this first people try to relate it the reason as when water is added it gets diluted so the value goes less it starts decreasing but the reality is not about whether water is diluted diluting the solution or not but it is more about somebody has written the answer that the ph value is more than the water ph value is less than the water that is why it happens 
it's not all these are not the reason the reason becomes like when you re, when you add this two there is a reaction that happens that there is a hydrogen atom in water is reacting with the solution and there is some change coming in which is raising the ph value or decreasing the ph value to explain this there is a need for student to explore like this take multiple solutions and see whether ph value is at uh, increasing decreasing so is there a common trend so to do this to really explore we are not able to give experience for children to really engage and learn out of it so technology can help us to make children engage and learn out of it that is why we are using digital ict can help in our teaching learning process and we also can collaborate let's all uh, do a short exercise So I'm just going to put a link in your uh, chat box. Please click on this link. So this is an activity for all of you. So when you click on this link, you will be getting a box where you are expected to write three things which you have learned in the last four days. You have to write only one one single word. What did you learn? Three new things that you have learned in the last three days. You write last four days, write three things in a word and then just submit it. Okay. So keep please doing this and let us see what is your responses. So one person has already submitted his answers. Three. Should write or write answer. Somebody has written V, G. Correctly, you should write what, what you have learned in the last three days. Write only one word. Should not write stop motion as two words. It should be one word. Thirty-two people have participated. We have two hundred plus people. Those who are finished, keep observing the screen. Around 67 people have submitted. Eighty two people have submitted. It'll take last one minute. You should not submit in the chat box. You have to submit only in this activity.
92 people. So right now we can see that very clearly it shows that many people have given responses, H5P, Canva, Audacity. So right now, 95 people who are sitting at different places have collaboratively able to create a digital content, right? A word cloud. So this is what is the possibility of technology that is possible. So this is what we were seeing that the, what is one of the, why do we need to use it is there is possibility of collaboration. And also it helped you to engage, right? So in this particular session now, if I see many people have stopped your camera, I could not even see one single camera open. All of you have stopped your camera and you are there. I don't even know whether you are engaged in this session. Is that true? How many of you really participating in the session is a question mark, right? Many people may keep all the things open on Zoom and then doing some other work. So whenever we come with technology sessions like this, we lost ourselves. There is a way that people lose. It's not that I wanted to push you to on your camera, but indirectly I could also find out or are you, are you engaged, <coughs> are you being, <coughs> sorry, indirectly to the, through this Mentimeter activity, I was at least able to find 50% of the participants are engaged in the session, right? Because within five minutes, if you have responded, means you are attentive in the session. If those who are not attentive, those who are only coming for attendance, when the attendance link is put, they'll come and mark and go. They must not be able to participate in this activity now, right? This is a way technology can help indirectly to check people also. There are multiple ways. It's not to check people. It is really to engage. If I keep on talking without asking you to do anything, will you be really interested to be part of the session? It's very hard, right? You have to push yourself. Somehow I should sit. It was such a boring session. No interaction. One person was all the time talking. <laughs> Why we should come and sit one hour? They could have recorded the session and send us. All these th thoughts comes in our mind. Being an adult, if we think like this, think about the children. <clears throat> so to engage them, this kind of activities. I was using now a Mentimeter as a tool to try engaging you as part of this live session instead of being only one way presenting. So this is one of the way that we can use. Technology can help us in our classrooms also. How many of you felt happy when you saw your answer on the screen? Can you give a virtual hand or a thumbs up? Really, I felt happy when I saw my answer on the screen. So we can see as an adult itself, we feel that I wanted to see my response on the screen, right? Why? It gives you a comfort that you are also part of this session, right? Your participation is valued. But in a classroom, when we don't use such session, we can do this if, even without Mentimeter. I could have asked you to do this. I could have told like uh, you open your mic and speak. How many people would be able to share in the same time? We have taken only five minutes for that particular activity, right? In that activity right now, I could see around 109 people have participated. That means 100 people are not actually watching the session. Right? 50% of the people are not active in this session. Now, now 100 people in 5 minutes collaboratively, I could get all your responses. And also I understood that there are main, many people have written some three tools. Uh, many people have written H5P, Audacity, Canva and Animation as a main thing. This also gives a feedback to us in the last four days. These are more, this is in your mind strongly, right? Many people have written this four means this is there in most of the people's mind. So these are some of the indirectly, I didn't ask you feedback, but indirectly it gives a learning to a presenter that these are the tools the students, the learners have picked up. Maybe due to different reason. Maybe tool was good or the presenter was good. Could be anything reason, but that is for the next level. But at least a quick feedback without spending time creating a form, sending to everyone, fill it off. Within five minutes through one activity, I could engage you. We all collaborated. 
I could also find how many people are participating, how many are active. I also could also sense it how which are the more major tools people are remembering, right? So these are all the things I could do it at five minutes because of using a digital tool. If I want to do data collection like this with other ways, what would have happened? It would have consumed time. So due to time, what we will usually do is we'll not ask the opinion of everyone. We will give chance for two to three people and say, okay, your question is resolved. Time is not there. We will move forward. So same thing happens in our classroom also. Our children, we, as a teacher, I want to engage my children. But due to time, I'm not able to. Right? Due to my size of the class, I'm not able to. So in this situation, we should be able to use technology that can help us. So uh, you can keep your video open only if you are having enough bandwidth. If you don't enough bandwidth, you can keep your videos closed. We trust you that you are attending the session. No problem. Okay, let's move on to the next. So these are some of the benefits. You can also see better data management. 307 responses have come from 110 people. But what happened is as a mind map, like as a word cloud, I could find the free, as per the frequency, the words are displayed. If I have to collect this 3,307 and do the analysis manually, it would have taken a lot of time. So there are many data management work, which we invest a lot in doing in a physical manner to help that we can actually take use of the technology. And also multimedia, multiple modes, we can use it because it supports various mediums. So this helps technology to take it better. So that is why we are in, uh, insisting that let's use technology, okay? So let us understand like how to really uh, use the technology. So this is something which you would have learned in the last four days. We should think about the purpose of using technology. It's not mandatory that I need to use technology just because I have to get one award or somebody should notice me or just because five days I have attended training, I should go back and then use technology in my classroom. It's not required. You should see whether there is a need for technology to be used in your classroom or not. Sometimes some content is more good without technology, right? So for example, when we were doing a kind of, um, uh, we did an experiment with a school. So we took two topics. One is digestive system and another is um, uh, plan, parts of plants, okay? And these two topics were taken and uh, it was taught to the students. There was two classes, one class for digestive system, we use technology for other class, uh, no technology. Similarly, for parts of plants, like about the different types of plants also, we used for one class technology, another class without technology. When at the end, when we evaluated, what we understood is, when we taught digestive system, the class which was taught using technology scored very high, right? But in the plants, when we taught, the classroom which was not using technology scored very high. Why? Because plant is something that they were having in the environment. In the classroom where there is no technology, they were taken to park, they were shown the plants, they were able to touch and feel it. They were able to take and see the roots. But in the technology, it was all in visuals, which really didn't give that first-hand experience to the students. But digestive system, children were not able to see the digestive system, how the digestion happens. So... <coughs> People who we where we use technology could at least visualize. Others couldn't even visualize which because direct experience were not possible. And they were not even able to visualize because the images didn't help. Right? The, without, without technology, when the teacher explained, they were not able to really understand the process. So that is where technology is not mandatory for all content. Only when our content needs technology. If you feel that using technology for teaching this content can enable the understanding, will help the children visualize, will help the children to understand this abstract concept, then we should use technology. So the first parameter which we need to analyze is whether my content needs technology or not. Second thing is whether my children need technology or not. For example, whether your children is ready for this technology. 
today we are all so excited when we said argumented reality, very uh, virtual reality, all that. Now we are so excited. New, new technology is coming up. Whenever there is some educational exhibition, you go and see, there will be so much of crowd wherever there is virtual technology there. Everyone wants to put their headphone and uh, like a headset and see what is happening virtually, right? So even adults get excited so much, but we need to see whether it is suitable for children, which level children we should use. I just wanted to share one of our experience with one of our trainer. When we used to do the training uh, development of Ethan and then the similar training in the face-to-face -face mode, one of the participants, we introduced an um, app called QR, uh, QR uh, Coloring app. So in that, actually, there will be pictures where you can color and then you scan it. It will become like uh, completely a 3D kind of, like it's a simulated content. So when you when there is an animal picture, when you scan it, the animal will come, start it moving. It will give sound. You can actually feed it. Like that, it will happen. So when the teacher, he is teaching class one and two, so the primary school teacher was so excited about this app. He said, like, if I use this in my classroom, children will learn very happily. So he went, Friday, he finished the training. He went on Monday, first period to the class. On first, first, first period itself, he started using this in the classroom. Every children was very happy because they are coloring physically, then they scanned it. So they saw the animal moving colorful, like the way they colored it. They also could uh, tell that, okay, there is a cow, let me feed a grass. Then the cow can give sound. So they were so happy. And even the teacher conducted assessment that he used to, all the students got more than 80%, which was not a usual performance. So the teacher was so happy. And then he said, like, using technology in my classroom was effective because the students had a joyful learning. The students were able to achieve. So he they gave a list of things. Due to this reason, my classroom was effective. But after two days, one of the kids in the classroom came to the teacher and said, Sir, when I saw the picture with your phone, the picture came alive. Because for a child of class one and two, living thing means which moves, which eats, that's a definition we are teaching them at class one and two. So when he saw with this mobile, the picture, the animal started moving, animal started giving sound, animal started eating food. So it has come live, right? So he asked the person, sir, can you give me your phone? I want to scan my picture of my grandmother, which is hanging on the wall for so long. She died before I was born. I love her. So please Tell me, give me your phone so that I can see my grandmother. Has the learning happened properly? There is something that has created a serious problem. Because this is a misunderstanding that virtual, the child of class one and two are not able to segregate between which is a real environment and which is a virtual environment. One side, as a teacher, we push all this into them. And on other side, on the safety purpose, we say children should not play games. They should not get addicted to PUBG. They should not play virtual games. Do we tell that also? Parents are afraid now. Because playing virtually, why children get addicted to virtual game and miss, lose their life, lose money is they are not able to segregate and understand what is virtual and what is real. So we, we have learned in Piaget's theory in psychology that how children learn at each year, right? With each stage, how they are able to learn. There is a stage they can just imitate. That is what a six-month baby does when the child handles mobile. Today, parents are so happy. You know, my child is born techno-safe, savvy. Every parent is very proud because six months only she is she can easily scroll the mobile. She knows where to click, where to off. The child really doesn't know what to do. The child is imitating what you have done. It is our interpretation saying that six months baby is techno saving. It just imitates, not even six months baby. You check the two years child also. There is no real learning. 
the learning is based on imitation. It may be right, it may be wrong. Right? They will not know whenever we give, like we have tried out with small kids who is in LKG and UKG giving game-based learning. Today we are very excited. Game-based learning, game karna, game karna. So to small kids, we gave some games where it's a very simple game. You can also download this package called Edu, um, sorry, uh, G Comprise. It is in mobile app also. If you see, there are 200 plus educational games. But a teacher should very clearly understand who is my learner, give proper instruction. Otherwise, it will mislead the child of using it. So when we gave, there is one game where there will be fishes coming like this. The child is expected to click on the fish. So as and when the child clicks on the fish, they will be able to score points. Okay. But when you give to LKG, UKG kids this game, they just keep pressing like this on the screen anywhere. They don't understand and click on fish. Even though a parent sits and says, click on the fish, click on the fish. Very rarely children understand and then do the game. But the same game, if you give to class one or two child and give instruction, you should click on the fish. Children are able to identify the fish and click. Right? Because they are at the stage where they are able to identify. So that is what all our psychology has taught. There is a way children learn at each stage. So we cannot introduce a technology and spoil them. We should not use technology inappropriate to the age group. We should think twice before using technology, right? So that is the second thing which we need to consider is learner. So that learner becomes important. Third is very important to understand what when you use technology is context. Uh, the app which I was telling is Edu, uh, sorry, G Comprise. G Comprise Educational Package. It is a complete educa educational games, which is free, which you can use. Right? I have just typed uh, the name in the chat box. You can use that. So the third thing is the context. So similarly, after one of our e-content uh, train, uh, training, one of the teacher, what he did is like there was one uh, BSNL content. BSNL has created one content which is very good for class 11 and 12. It is about how brain functions. Okay, there was an anime uh, simulation which was done by them. It was very beautiful. Very, It's a very abstract content to explain how brain functions. But that <coughs> the animation they have created was well created to make the abstract concept, concept understandable. So during our training, uh, one of the session we had with BSNL, so they offered that uh, uh, animation free to all the people who attended that training. So one of the teacher, what they did is like they took this and went, um, it was a story at least uh, in around 2015, 16 or some around 17 during that time when we conducted in face to face manner. So this BSNL, they gave the content. When one of our science teacher who attended the training, he saw the visual animation, he was so excited telling, ma'am, this is a very difficult concept. Uh, like when I go to classroom and explain, people don't understand. So always I really struggle to make them understand. So this animation will help. So this teacher was so excited. What he did is, uh, what he did is like, Friday he was there. I'm not, I'm not using PowerPoint right now, sir, because to explain this, I don't need a PowerPoint. So I should also use technology only when it is required, right? I need to see the faces better to explain so that I get little more an energy to explain to you. There are people who are watching me. So I'm just looking at the videos and explain, right? So when we see here, uh, this particular teacher at the fifth day, today you are all at the fifth day, so some of you must be asked, like, what is your plan of action? So this teacher was so much in excitement that Monday morning when I go to the class, I am already teaching this chapter. So I'm going to use this content in my class. I will show how different it is. So what he did, he was thinking, sitting here itself in Delhi, he was thinking, in my class, I don't have a projector. So where should I borrow a projector? So during lunchtime, he called to his cluster center, center and said, sir, I wanted to use, I came to NCRT, I got training, I got animation. I want to use it in my class. So please, sir, can, you borrow, can I borrow your projector? He talked very friendly and arranged for a projector. He don't have a laptop with me, nor school had a computer. 
So what he was doing is trying to check with all his friends who has a laptop. And he found one friend and he decided that to friend that friend, I'll come and collect the laptop from you at seven o'clock itself. you be ready with the laptop. He arranged everything sitting in Delhi because he want to use it on Monday. All planning well done. So he went to the class. He morning, he was telling that morning he got up at seven, went and collected from his friend the laptop. Then he has to go to the center, requested the person to open the center uh, early because before nine, the government office doesn't open. But he requested the person to come at eight o'clock, open the room, borrowed the projector. He took so much effort. He went to the class. He told all the students that day, today I'm going to really use the tool. Like, no, I'm going to show you something which no other students of our school has seen. You will really understand how, where, how easy this concept is. He gave a big expectation. He created a high expectation in the children. All children started sitting like this. Like, no, with full excitement to see something on the screen. There was no screen, so he brought a white cloth, tied up like a screen, and then he took the laptop, he connected to the projector. Everything is set. Now he checked whether the software, this animation is working in laptop. It was working fine. Now he was trying to connect to the power cable because projector has to be connected to a power cable to on. So then he understood the classroom don't have a power cable. There is no PowerPoint. Only a switch is there for light and fan. There is no plug point in the room. All efforts went waste. Right? So sometimes we develop content like this without knowing where it is going to be used. Whether facility is there or not. So whenever we create content, we should understand that we have a context where some people may have, we cannot make a content very high, huge in size. Because everyone may not <coughs> have a high bandwidth to download that content. I have to compress the content. I cannot create AR and VR content because everyone may not have a VR set. So everyone cannot have every facility. So whenever we make a content, we should make it in multiple formats so that everyone will be able to make use of it okay so that is what we tell us like whenever we want to create a digital content we need to decide that the purpose purpose is decided based on the content learner and context and it is also very important once we decide the context to design when you design first thing is we need to decide what type of digital content i'm going to decide so there was a question what is the difference between simulation and animation Animation is something which is pre-recorded. You cannot work. Animation is one way. It is a kind of illustration of whatever you are explaining as a voice, but it is one way. It is like a video. Animation is a part, it's a type of video. Okay. But simulation is something. This is a simulation. The one I showed in FED. The one I showed in GeoGebra. All these are simulations. Why? I'm able to simulate. I'm able to change. I can select what I want. In animation, you can't select. It is one way. It is pre-recorded. It will be displayed. But if the same thing, you can record it as a video and that becomes an animated video. Right? But right now, this is a simulation where I can perform. Simulation will have something to change, something to perform, which will be able to be done, right? So that is what is the difference between animation and simulation. So I'm not going to explain everything. If you do not know anything in the screen, please write it in chat box, which I'll explain. These are various forms of e-content. In this, if you do not know anything, please write on the book. Interactive, all interactive content is not simulation. Interactivity doesn't mean simulation. Simulation means there should be a cause and effect. For example, here, if I take add water, the pH value decreases. There is a conceptual relation behind this, right? So interactivity doesn't mean this has interactivity. This has interaction. But simulation will have a cause and effect, which is conceptual, having an understanding. Yes. 
Any other content which you are not clear? Energized textbook. Energized textbook, everyone have it in your hand. All the textbooks which has QR code are energized. It is a physical book energized with a QR code which links the digital content to your digital book. So that is an energized book. AR and VR. <clears throat> okay. So OLAB is an example for virtual lab. It is, it is a type of simulation because when, when, see, we don't call, you can see here it is like a virtual setup of your lab, right? So here you are having the way you will have a water pipe in your lab. There will be a beaker container. There will be a tester. All the things are there like a lab. Then this is called as a virtual lab. This is a virtual lab where you are using simulations. All the virtual lab will have simulations, but all simulations cannot be called as virtual lab. Okay. AR, VR, we need to experience. So let me ask, I'll just show you something. <coughs> AR and VR, I want you to experience. So what you can do is, uh, due to time, I'll first tell you an app. You install in the app and just let's continue with the session. And then we will experience. I've just put the name of the app in the um, chat box. Please give this app for download. Don't uh, use that now, but just keep it for download so that we will be watching it. I'll explain AR, VR at the end. Okay, so that it helps me to explain the difference. So let's move ahead. Uh, so these are the various content types. But even if you have decided, I want to develop a video, you also need to decide what type of video content format you are going to present. Because this is dependent on your content, whether this is a screencast is suitable. When you will use screencast is if you're from a computer science, you want to show how the program programming has to be done. You want to write how the comment of C has to be written when you run the program, how it happens. Then you need to record the screen of the computer. Whenever you record video of the screen of the computer, then it is called as a screencast video, right? Whenever it is like a glass screen video is like where you will be, uh, you must have seen a Baiju's video where the presenter will stand directly like this. And the presenter will be writing with the fingers like this. The text appears on the front. So there is no blackboard. There is a glass board in front of that where they are writing. It is visible as if it's written with a hand. Right? So that is what is a glass screen video. So you need to download this. It is an Android app. You can download this in your mobile. And we will see that later, but not now. We will be continuing with the session and then later I'll tell you what to do. So that's what is the glass screen uh, means. So there are like various formats which we can use for developing our content. And it also during the design stage, we need to decide what e-content we have decided. How are you going to develop? Using which tool you are going to develop the content? Maybe are you going to create an interactive content using Lumi? or using some other tool? Are you going to create an animation using pencil? To... These are all various softwares available. You must have learned one or two softwares during this training, but there are n number of softwares which you can learn. So one way to learn is go to CIET website. Just go to CIET website under activities. You'll also see workshop and training. If you come here every week, we conduct five day session. And now we are uh, running the sessions in Hindi version. So for the next five months, all the sessions will be in Hindi version. So you can watch these session every first week, cyber safety training is given. Every second week, there will be training on NEP recommendation for education technology. Every fourth week, you will have training on development of digital content. So you can come here, click on this, Go to the page and then you will know like what are the sessions, there will be registration form. All details will be available in this, but we need to keep learning tools so that we will be able to use and develop content for ourselves. And we can also use our digital content as a supplement or a complement. For example, right now I'm using this image to, to complement what I am saying. 
complement way of resource will be always along with your teaching. So here I'm using this presentation as a complement resource for my session. Supplementary means if I give a video link for you to watch later to learn more, then that becomes supplement. So you can use digital content or technology in a complement way or in a supplement way. You can also choose, choose technology that is integrated or infused way. For example, the GeoGebra, which I show is a infused. You cannot segregate mathematics and tool. But for example, Mentimeter, which I used now for you to act, the word cloud which we have created is a tool example for integrate. Mentimeter software is separate. The content which I have put is separate. Tomorrow I can remove this content and put some other content. So a software which you use can, can be at the level of integration or the level of infusion. Whenever you use the tools which are at infusion, your content will, the content learning will happen better. Whenever you use tool at integrated, it will enhance your teaching process. So the more you wanted children to understand content, use more of infused tools. That is what will help children. So if you see when we design, we need to make a very clear understanding of three questions. When I'm going to use this digital technology, uh, where I'm going, how I'm going to use, for whom I'm going to use. All this need to be very clearly addressed during this design part. The third one is the develop part. When you develop the content, we also need to understand like, we, we should always ensure that we should ensure cognitive, psychological, as well as physical is embedded. So for example, let's watch this video. I'm just going to only show a little part of it. So if you have observed this particular uh, video, you must have seen that children are applying their cognitive to think what is the right answer, right? The children are physically engaged, jumping and really touching. So similarly, we do it in our classroom, asking student to come drag and drop on the board. Sometimes you can see at the end, the children are happy when they get the right answer. The psychological aspect is also used. And psychological aspect of a child at this age at this age, children will be active learners, right? So there is an activity-based learning which is encouraged here. So we can see here there is a there is an integration of psychological aspect, cognitive aspect, and physical aspect as well. So only whenever we use technology, many times we forget this that we need to really integrate this. Okay, so that becomes a stopper. So now I would request all of you have installed that app. I want all of you to get up from your place, take the app, open the app, just rotate like this, see 360 degree around and come back to your seat. Just walk around, see for one minute and then come back to your seat. At least you should get up from your place. Walk around, see around and then just come. Sky view light. I'll give you one minute. Those who have seen, can you open your mic and speak? What did you see? You can open your mic and speak. Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma Good morning, ma'am. Myself, Lakshmi Suri. Uh, I, saw, I see the green branch uh, revolving around 
uh, chirping of my parakeeters, uh, some helpers uh, um, walk in the kitchen and I am hearing that type of sounds, uh, TV sounds and all uh, environment sounds I had heard. Even you are saying, hey, please come back in one minute, this sound I, I had heard. Like uh, that. Okay. Okay. Now, I want you to open your Skyview Light app. Open the app with the mobile and then see around. Okay? See okay. what you are able to see from your mobile. Okay. Okay. I have seen. Okay, okay ma'am. I, I got it. Okay, ma'am. Thank but you. Ma yes, me too, ma'am. Satellite also. Ma I you saw the satellite also. Satellite also, also yeah. You saw satellites. Where did you see? Whether uh, inside your room or outside your room? Ma'am, different zodiac signs. You like saw Libra. different zodiac signs, okay? Yes. Like Libra, Sagittarius. Jupiter. Jupiter. You saw some planets. Some of them have seen yes. planets. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. All of you saw now, along in your room or it was you went to the sky. Did you no, go no, to no. sky or sky came into your room? It came in our, into our room. So you can also see your room and also all these planets inside the sky, right? Did you were you able to see your table, chair, cupboard, fan, yes. my wall? But yes, still I'm able to see all the things. This is argumented reality. Yes. You have argumented your classroom to look like a sky. Right? Yes. So this app help, this is an example of argumented reality. Virtual reality means. You will go to sky. When you put that kit on your head, it will look like you are in the sky. That's a ultra one. You will be part, virtually part of that environment. That is what virtual reality means. Argumented reality, wherever you are, you are argumenting that place to see something else, which is not actually part of it. Right? And uh, when you see this too, you would have now understood AR and VR as well. And now what happened? I could see many people smiling. When you saw this, automatically you got a smile. Right? You were involved cognitively. You were involved physically. You were involved also psychologically. Right? You, when you walked around, you felt like, okay, I am just having that feel. I'm seeing a planet. There was an expression of happiness. Right? So this is how we need to use technology. If we use technology like I will talk in Zoom, you listen and watch. What will happen? I don't need to explain. You are sitting for last five days and watching people in Zoom taking classes. Meenu ma'am, your mic is off. Your mic is muted. Because they have muted all the mics. Yes. Reality. So technology use means not using PowerPoint presentation and some using device. We need to plan our class such that they are involved all the three ways. And also when we do some impact should be there. Otherwise, don't better don't use technology. Not don't use technology for the sake of using it. Use technology when your content demands it, when your context demands it, when you are Learners demands it. Yes. Ma'am, there is another uh, app for uh, this augmented reality that is uh, Stellarium Plus. That yeah, there are several several apps which you can share. That's where I said all the apps and uh, train. there are a lot of training you need to learn. This is some example for us to understand that there is apps like this. Okay. So let us proceed. We have another five minutes. I have to tell about you very important one more point to close uh, the session. So whenever you are designing, you should keep all this in mind when you design an ICT integration. When you develop content, you always keep in mind whether this will be one way or when, when I give this, even a video can be recorded as one way only, right? But when you put that component, there should be some scope for a teacher to use that in the interactive manner. So the video should not be like continuous explanation. There can be questions. What do you think here? Give us space. So there the teacher can stop and ask the question for reflection in the classroom. 
right? So the components in the video should be integrated such that that can give a teacher scope for doing that. That's all we need to understand. So the last uh, point is when you develop and when you wanted to go to the next step of ADI is like when you wanted to implement it, you also need to do a tryout in the class. Whatever you prepare, please first try out. Try to do a small action research. Try to understand what children are liking it or not, whether it is useful or not. Then share your experience with others, maybe positive, maybe negative. This will help you to build your knowledge in using technology. And whenever we evaluate, don't evaluate only whether they are scoring mark or not. Also evaluate the reaction, whether children like it or not. Whether children are really learning what is intended to learn. Whether children are learning some behavioral, like the example I said of class one and two child, when you use AR app without explanation, they may have a misunderstanding that will affect their behavior in the virtual world, right? So we need not only analyze results, we should analyze all this. And once any time you develop any content of your own, you should release it as open educational resource. Okay, whenever you have open educational resource, there are only three possibilities. All the content is reserved, all the rights is reserved with me. That is copyrighted. This is the symbol. The symbol means you cannot use, you cannot share, you cannot do anything. It is belonging to somebody. If you take that, you, you are stealing their property, right? The second is, the last one is public time, completely open. When it is C cross, that means no rights. Anybody can take it, anybody can use it, no need for permission to use it, it is like that. That is called public domain, okay? The in middle is creative commons. Creative commons means it can actually allow you to do uh, four things. I'm sorry. Uh, creative commons allows you to do four things. Like it will allow you to reuse it will allow you to uh, reshare all that. Uh, so that, that is what um, uh, this um, OER means. OER also helps you so that like it can, what all OER can be, like it could be open access resources. For libraries, if it is OER, it gives open access. No need to subscribe and pay money. So open access libraries are there. There are open data. Data is available, which you can take and use it. There are open source softwares. There are open educational resources, which are digital content. There are open courses. There are crowdsourcing platform. Diksha is a crowdsourcing flat platform. Okay. So these are the ways you can have open educational resources. And open educational resources will give you permission to adapt and redistribute. Okay, so but under that there are several licenses. So Creative Commons can have four license in the license that can be four words. By if it is written means you should give attribution. You should tell thanks to who has shared with you. NC means non-commercial. ND means non-derivative. Non-commercial means this material which is having NC cannot be sold. Okay. Non-derivative means the material cannot be broken into pieces or remade it. It can be used as it is. All the textbooks will have no derivative work. All the textbooks have, will have ND as a license because textbooks cannot be made into chapters and chapters cannot be sold. The book can be shared as a whole. It cannot be broken and shared. Share alike means whatever license is given, you have to share it as it is. So when you make these combinations, you get seven licenses. The first license is CC BY. If anywhere you see this symbol or this word, that means when you wanted to use that resource, you have to give attribution to the person who has created, right? When you have see this symbol, CC BY SA, that means you need to give attribution. And when you modify that resource, you have to share it with the same license. Third is CC BY NC. NC means non-commercial. Anything that has this, you can use it by giving attribution, but you cannot make money out of it. The next license is CC by NC by SA, where now two things are there. I can use it with the same license. I can share it, but I cannot sell it for money. 
cc by nd means i can use it by giving attribution i can use it as a whole but i cannot use only parts of it okay i can use only as a whole the last license is cc by nc by nd that means i can use it by giving attribution i have to use it as a whole and i cannot redistribute it for anything for the money these are the various licenses that we need to be aware of and if you need to learn about this license in depth there is a site i'll give you the link of the course which is a very short course whoever has uh, attended ncrt's course uh, earlier you would have done this course if you have not done this course you can go and do this course it's a very small course uh it's a very 2 hours to 3 uh, hours course which you can do it and uh, you can learn this on your own i'm just trying to put it in your uh, zoom chat box just give me a minute sorry i put a link in the chat box you can save this link this is a course on open educational resources it's an international course you will get a certificate if you clear the course whoever has not done it till now kindly do this course and complete it okay so thank you so much i'll stop here over to alok what is the difference between sa and nd sa means you need to share it with whatever license if somebody is giving a presentation with a license nc then you modify it also you should give it with nc only share alike means like that nd means you as it is use it you cannot break it the textbooks you can as it is share it you cannot share it as small chapters how can we develop max content for ar vr you have to attend separate training for that right now it is not covered in this okay so ar vr content development you can learn uh, certain tools like unity and all that which helps you to develop ar vr content there are many trainings that is conducted you can uh, attend some of those trainings and learn from that thank you so much alok are you there yeah uh, yes ma'am uh, thank you so much ma'am for the detailed and elaborative sessions hope all the queries of that uh, participants were is